Hello and welcome to Hopalong Studio. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you a simple watercolor technique using the Dina Wakely Media Scribble Sticks. These are a new medium for me. I just got these a few days ago. And so I wanted to share with you what I've learned so far about this medium. So let's get started. So let's talk about what we're going to be using in this project today. Again, the Dina Wakely Media Scribble Sticks. I have a set of 12 here. And I'm also using Tracy Scott Paper Artsy flower stamps that I also got this weekend. And I'm going to show you just a quick demo on a tag and I'll show you how I actually use this in an art journal at the end of the video, just to show you some different ways you can use this technique on a larger project. So we're going to start by just stamping some images onto our tag. In this case, we're using archival ink and these Tracy Scott Paper Artsy stamps. This is the first set of Tracy Scott stamps that I have purchased and started using. And I have to say, I really like them just because of the size and just the imagery. I think they're really great for art journal pages as well as other projects, just because of the size and the detail of the images themselves. So it's going to want to stamp that firmly onto your background. You end up getting a really nice crisp image from these stamps. And then I want to actually go in and add some leaves as well. Actually, it was at the Creative Scrapbooker Carnival this weekend, and that's where I picked up all of these uh, stamps and different images. If you are ever in Calgary or in Edmonton, uh, the Creative Scrapbooker Carnival is a great place to go. Whether or not you're a scrapbooker, a maker, an art journaler, they always have lots of fun classes and new things to learn. As well, they have a really great vendor showcase as well, and that's where I picked up a lot of these things. It was a chance for me to pick up a few different things that maybe I had not seen before. Or in my case, I like trying to use local vendors where I can and just shop locally. So let's start with uh, just opening this, the Dina Wakely Media Scribble Sticks. Uh, these sticks are have pigment in them and they are water soluble. So you can end up doing some really fun watercolor techniques with them. And to start with this, I'm just going to start by just adding some of the scribble stick just to the page. You want to put a fairly thick layer onto your page if you want the watercolor to come up fairly vibrantly. If you want it very subtle, you just don't have to go necessarily as deep, but the idea is you want to have a fair amount of pigment on the page just for it to move the way you would really like it to. And these scribble sticks have been on the market quite a while. I've been, uh, I've never actually bought a set. Part of it is I had been in a Dean Weekly class years ago and I they had scribble sticks to use. I didn't really know how to use them. So I don't remember having a great experience with them. But part of it too is I didn't really understand how to use the medium. And that was kind of on me <laughs> not knowing at that time and not being as experienced at the time to understand kind of how they worked and and kind of what the results you could get from them were. And I actually used some new color two watercolor pens crayons a lot in my work. And they've been really great. But I know not everyone can afford high-end watercolor crayons. So I wanted to try to find something that was maybe a little bit more affordable just to show you and be able to just include in this demo. So before I add the crayon, I was actually supposed to put be putting in my stem and I realized I've just actually colored over where my stem would be. But you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to throw it in anyways. And then for this case, I am using a zebra permanent marker just to add my stems in here. And you just want to let that dry a little bit before you add any sort of water to it, just so that it can actually stay permanently on there. One thing I've realized with pens is even if they are permanent pens, you do need to give them time to actually dry and set before adding water to them. I used to get really frustrated going, well, these aren't working according to plan. And I realized, well, it's user error again. I wasn't being very careful about what was kind of required to be able to get a really good result. So again, we're just going to continue just coloring on the surface. I'm kind of doing us a whole layer of the one color. And I'm going to come in and add a little bit of the other colors on top. The idea is that you want to actually have a fairly good, strong layer of crayon to start with. Because you can always pull some off if you find it too dark, but if it's not dark enough, then you're going to have to find different ways of trying to add additional color onto it. And you might find that a bit challenging, so I, I usually end up just adding more. You can always 
remove some, but it's harder to add some later on. And it isn't that you can't, you just usually end up having to wet the crayons to do so, and sometimes I don't really want to be doing that. Alright, so that's pretty good. The nice thing about using these tags is they're fairly smooth paper. If you're using this on a watercolor paper, it is going to react differently, so just be aware of that. At this point, I'm using a smooth paper. If you're not using a tag, um, a Bristol board journal, uh, the Dilutions journals are really good for this as well. There's a lot of different surfaces that you can use for this type of tag. I'm just going to add a little bit on top of that reinforcer. I just basically just dipped into my water a little bit. If you feel like your brush is too wet, just take a little bit along the side and then that will bring less water into your brush. You could also use a, a water pen for this. I prefer using brushes because I feel like I can control the water a lot more and I actually do have a fairly good set of watercolor brushes which is why I prefer to use them. So for this project, I'm actually using a size six watercolor brush. And you can also decide how much water you wanna use. You can use a little, you can use a lot, depending on if you want some of those more crayony marks to be left, or if you want everything to be more of a really smooth blend. I want a little bit of both. I don't want it to necessarily be a perfect blend. In that case, if I wanted a perfect blend, I would totally just use watercolor paints. But in this case, I kind of want the little bit of that sketchy feel that these crayons leave in the surface just because of the binders in them. It's a bit different than the gum Arabic you usually see in watercolor paints. And as you can see, as I'm working, I'm just kind of moving some of this color around. Some areas are going to be lighter, some are going to be darker. And I may choose to have it a little bit lighter around the edges of the flower. Part of it is I haven't brought the crayon right up to the edges. Again, you don't have to bring it all the way up to the edges. But what's nice about this is it can give you those little softer spots and make it look a little bit highlighted around the leaves and around the shapes. Again, it's personal preference. It's whatever kind of look that you're looking for, but it's just adding water to kind of smooth out the crayon. So there you go, there's kind of your first layer, and you can see that the way I've actually done this, you can see some of the crayon marks below, and that's kind of on purpose. You could work and add extra layers and extra colors to get a perfectly smooth blend, but I think the beauty of some of these watercolor crayons and especially these scribble sticks is to give this a little bit more variation and mark making. So this is kind of semi dry. It's not fully dry yet, but that doesn't mean we can't move on to the next color. So in this case, I'm using a little bit of the fuchsia and the blushing colors. And as well, I'm going to use a little bit of the cheddar in the center of the flower. Uh, this particular set doesn't come with a straight yellow. Cheddar is your closest yellow. And it has more of that kind of warm yellow-orange look to it. So it's actually not a bad color for this set. My understanding is she has pretty much all of her paint colors in these scribble sticks as well. I just only have the one set. So if you are a huge scribble stick fan, this is something that you can easily... Just use all of your colors and get whatever kind of shades that you're looking for. So what I wanted to do was actually start with the centers of these a little bit of a lighter pink. And this is these scribble sticks are really great if you're not really comfortable with using watercolor paints. Because this way you don't have to try to figure out a lot of the blending or control the water as much. The scribble sticks basically will put down the color and all you have to do is blend it a little bit. And so if you're newer to watercolor or you want to use this for coloring and you're finding it, you're having a little bit of trouble using watercolors, this is not a bad way to go for just getting really familiar with different products that you can use that are kind of watercolor-ish but aren't necessarily as challenging as using watercolor paints. I love watercolors, so I do use them a lot in my personal work just because I find them easy to use and I love being able to have a lot of the wet on wet techniques. But this is also another really great option, especially if you're newer to watercolors. And I think in one way I would definitely use these particular scribble sticks in 
my work is on top of acrylic paint because then you'll be able to kind of blend some things, have it be there, but where a place where watercolors not really work super well, uh, that is one of those avenues where you can use something like these scribble sticks. You can get some pretty great results where it would maybe not really work properly using just watercolor paints. Again, I'm still putting a fair amount of color down because the idea is you want to actually have a fair amount of color down on your tag here just so that you have more room to blend to a more vibrant color. If you find that you don't like how much of a color that you have on it, you can always rub the color and then take it off with your with your brush, um, put in your water, and then just dab your, your brush dry and then keep picking up color. So if you want to go lighter, it's much easier to go lighter with these and go darker. Because the moment you want to go darker, then you need to actually dip these in water to try to get them to give you a second layer of color. So with these ones, I'm just basically just dipping into my water. Just going to take a little bit off the side. I don't want my brush too wet. I'm just going to go in and start blending color. And if you're not super comfortable with watercolor painting, I'd maybe suggest a slightly smaller brush. And so in this case, I've actually have too much water on that surface. So I'm just going to dip off onto my shop towel here. And I'm going to pull a bit more off. So now I'm getting that pink back. So it's a simple thing you can do to try to like not lose that center color. With this one, I'm going to start by a little bit of the center color, then I'm going to do the outside. So to try to keep the centers a little bit more pink, you want to use a little less water. Do the light pink first, the dark pink second, and then just let them kind of meld together. And so with that, you're kind of creating a little bit of a wet on wet technique. And if you're not familiar with wet on wet techniques, I do actually have a few videos where I have shown how a wet, um, wet on wet technique works. And I thought that might be useful for you. You can see how you can get these really kind of soft colors where the crayon looks cool, but then once you start adding in some of your colors, it gets much, much softer looking. And, and just a nicer blend. Center area, I'm just throwing some water on. I'm pushing it out to the sides. Even though this is being painted on black, you will notice in little places some of the yellow. So I'm just pulling it out to the edges there. And you just want to do that until you finish the flower. So now I'm just done the flower. And the next thing we want to do is start adding color to the leaves. And this is not meant to be a very complicated technique. It's to show you just one way you can use these scribble sticks onto just a tag project or in an art journal. And so with this one, I'm just going to basically add just a full layer of the olive to these leaves. And then you just add in a little bit of, of the green in places that you maybe want some highlights. I know Dina style is generally fairly loose. This is probably a little bit more tighter than I know a lot of the stuff that she does, but I wanted to show you something that was a little bit more of just a straight coloring watercolor type technique. And just to help you get familiar with this, I find that when I'm learning how to use new mediums, I just like playing with things like stamping shapes and just figuring out how do these things flow? How do they work? How can I make them work in my artistic practice? And there's never any harm in getting more brush practice. The better you are with your brushes, uh, the better results you will get on your projects. So now I've let this dry a little bit. And now let's say you want to actually add something on top. This is where you could start adding some mark making or other things. So I'm going to be using a marine scribble stick. And just to give you a sense of like what you can do with this. You can make little plus signs. You could make little doodles. Really, you can really add anything on top. And you don't necessarily have to watercolor these you could leave them just as is as little mark making and because of the way these crayons work this is a really good technique that works really well but again if you want to add some color and make them softer you can also do that and let's say you want to have these looking a little bit softer you can always dip your scribble stick into your water and now add it on so now you're getting a very wet mark and so depending on what you're trying to accomplish with your mark making this is another way that you can start adding layer on layer in a really effective way. I've decided I don't want this going all the way up the tag, so I'm just going to start kind of petering it out, doing a few here and there. And let's say that's too much for you. Let's say, let's say that's too bright, not a fan, don't like it, wish you hadn't done it. Then what you, what you can do is just take a brush, add a little bit of water to it, and just go across them lightly. 
And this is where you could actually just basically remove all the color. If I scrub really hard, you can remove all the color. Or you can leave very subtle marks and make that as part of your background. And this is where these things have some versatility because being able to be smudged, being able to be really soft, being very light, a more intense color, a little bit less intense color, this is where you can add a lot of variation. And I love the idea that you can draw on them, you can put them in water, you can do a lot of different things with them and you could leave little marks that kind of stick out. So the last thing I wanna do with this is to add my quote and a ribbon. And for my quote, I chose vulnerability. It's not about winning, it's not about losing. It's about having the courage to show up and be seen. And I've actually done this on vellum. So I've actually used a full piece of double-sided adhesive for the back of this, just so it looks nice and consistent on the tag. And the reason I chose vellum was because I wanted to be able to see the color underneath as well. I didn't want it to be completely white. And I actually have a Royal type manual typewriter from the, I figure it's probably from about the 1950s that I actually like using for adding all of my quotes. And so I just want to make sure that I line that up. And this quote means a lot to me actually. I do read a lot of Brene Brown. Uh, she has been very inspiring for me. And this weekend I actually was volunteering at the Creative Scrapbooking Carnival. And it was a very fun experience and I had such a great time, but I went in not knowing really anyone. I knew one or two people and that was about it. And I, it felt like a bit of a, a stretch just to put myself out there and just be vulnerable and be kind and just kind of see what happened. And I had such a fabulous time. I made so many amazing connections. So now I'm gonna actually use this Zig Clean Color Dot Pen to just add dots around my little quote here because I think it's a little just too white for where I'm putting this on the tag. But yeah, I found it very inspiring, the idea that vulnerability is something that is challenging. It's hard to do. It's not easy. But at the same time, the results can be so good. And to be honest, I met so many wonderful people and I was just surprised just how welcoming and kind everyone was. Yeah, I met a few people that were maybe a little bit more guarded and, and that's okay. We're all at different places in our vulnerability journey. And one thing I realized from the whole experience is how often I want to control the situation. If I have to be vulnerable, I don't know if I necessarily want to be involved. And realizing that it's not about winning or losing, it's just accepting kind of what is by going and putting yourself out there and kind of seeing what will happen. And it's not a zero sum game. Things don't have to go perfectly, but they also don't have to go badly. It's just about reaching out and just trying to be just vulnerable and real and just see what kind of comes of it. Cause I know for myself this weekend, I ended up just making so many new friends and making so many amazing connections that if I had not put myself out there, I would have really missed out on something amazing. And so I'm just gonna finish this off by just adding a little bit of ribbon. I'm just gonna add this as a bookmark for one of my books. This piece of ribbon is actually just a random piece I pulled off of a package. I actually, anytime I see ribbon on, on a handle, on anything, I grab it, I throw it in my stash, and it makes perfect little bookmark ribbons. And what a great way of repurposing something that would normally just probably get thrown in the trash. So before we end it, I wanted to show you what it looks like in a larger format. So here's my small tag, which is great. It has all of it with the Dina Wakely scribble sticks. The original layout that I did for this was in my journal and I was using the scribble sticks basically for the background. And then I actually did add watercolor paint for the flowers. So you can see that I have a little bit more vivid color with the watercolor paint over the scribble sticks. And again, I could have added layers on layers of scribble sticks to make it a little bit darker, but even just the color values of this is a little bit different. I like doing a lot of color mixing in my watercolor. So this is just a different way you can do it. I hope this is giving you some inspiration about how you can use the scribble sticks and these stamps in a variety of different projects. This art journal page could easily be a scrapbooking page. This tag could easily be changed into a card. What I wanted to show you today is a basic technique that can be used on a variety of surfaces. And I, that's what I love about some of these mediums is because they are very transferable, you can end up with a lot of different techniques that work from project to project. And I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you have, I'd appreciate it if you'd just subscribe to my channel and like this video. You can also leave a comment below about what you liked about this video or any questions you might have. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. 
Also, please visit my website, hopalongstudio.com. There I actually do have pictures for each of these projects, as well as written instructions there if you'd like to reference back to it. I also have lots of other ideas on how to build a creative self-care habit in your own life. I hope that you have a really great week, you take time for creative self-care, and I will see you next time.